Now let us turn to our hymn of faith. My faith works out. <laughs> around us, family and friends, and yes, this family of faith. And so this morning, as we petition you in behalf of those whose names we have called, we also pause to give you thanks that you have blessed us and to ask that you continue to bless us with grateful, truly grateful hearts. We do lift our prayers for those in need. We ask that you uh, safeguard those whose lives are now in harm's way from approaching storm, that you help them prepare, and that you watch over all of those who try to safeguard the life and well-being of our citizens. Bless us as we worship you this morning, that here we may gain some new insight into our own lives that will make us better people, that will make us better servants, and that will make this church a stronger witness to you. Hear the prayers that are upon our hearts and minds, and answer them in accordance with your will, for we offer them in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ, 
your Son, our Lord. Verses 42 through 50. Uh, they're found in your Bible. This passage found in your Bible on page 1519 in the second column under the caption, Causing to Sin. Mark 9, 42 through 50. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eyes causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Here is a reading of this troublesome scripture. Now there are many passages of scripture that give biblical liter literalists a great deal of consternation and this one is a case in point. Jesus uses some pretty graphic language in this passage. Now I expect that in this literal form it would disturb all of us. He says if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your eye causes you to, to sin, pluck it out. And I'm so happy this morning not to be delivering a message to a lot of one-handed people in wheelchairs with one eye. There is somewhere in this passage a spiritual application and that's what I want us to search for this morning because when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he was, he was telling them something they needed to know. In search of a spiritual application, I find the analogy of editing to be very helpful. And I want to have you reflect back on the passage from James that Ken let us in this morning. The advice, the, the general, general advice to, to all of the churches, confession and forgiveness are ways that our lives are edited. This is the kind of editing in a spiritual sense that says the good news of the gospel is God's grace is there for our lives. 